Hello, I'm Matthew Gavidia. Today in the MGH Life Sciences Medical World News, the American Journal of Managed Care is pleased to welcome Vipas Ratanji, a senior practice expert at Gallup, and Dr. Brian M. Parker, the chief quality officer for Allegheny Health Network. Both recently co-wrote a contributor article on AGMC.com discussing the importance of key leadership experiences in developing future physician leaders. Can you both just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your work? Sure. I'm Brian Parker. I'm the both the chief quality and learning officer at Allegheny Health Network here in uh, Western Pennsylvania. Um, oversee basically all the quality, safety, and value work uh, that contributes to the the patient care and uh, across the network, both in the inpatient and ambulatory spaces. And that also includes uh, all of our governmental and pay for value programs that the, the network and the hospitals participate in. And my name is Vibhas Ratanji. I'm a subject matter expert with Gallup, specializing in healthcare. Uh, I also lead Gallup's research in the area of leadership development and organizational development and the future of technology, especially in HR and, and healthcare specifically. A lot of my time is spent researching emerging trends in healthcare, as well as working with our top healthcare clients, including Allegheny Health Network. To start us off, Brian, in your experience with, uh, within the healthcare industry, can you discuss some of the intangibles that contribute to better preparedness and quality in care delivery? Sure, Matt. Um, so one of the things that, that we know in, in medicine and, and in healthcare delivery is um, that um, reducing variability um, in the delivery of care. Um, and and that, that, that particular notion shouldn't necessarily bump up against what's considered the practice or the art of medicine, but the, the ability to actually reduce variation um, during the practice and as many things that you can affect from a systems perspective definitely improves quality. In addition to that, the design of the systems that are there, because so much of, of healthcare delivery is done by humans. And so by setting those guardrails up so that the systems aren't designed to actually allow folks to make mistakes, but actually um, are forced function um, systems, so that the human factor <clears throat> that's in part of the delivery of care um, isn't allowed to actually get off and outside of those boundaries so that it reduces the variability and it reduces the potential for either error or harm. And additionally, Brian, can you share some experiences you perceive as vital to developing future physician leaders, especially amid the ongoing pandemic? Sure, so, you know, in, in the article, we talked about, you know, six key experiences. Um, and, and two of those specifically um, in this current time, you know, as what we've been going through since really March of, of 2020, sort of lend themselves to um, development, which I think in, in many ways was forced upon folks to, to do things differently simply because the environment of care changed so drastically. So one of them is really cross-functional projects. Um, people had to come together in healthcare systems and hospitals in different ways than they ever had to before to start to solve for problems that they were, being, that they were faced with, not just in the care delivery space, but also supply chain. Suddenly the disruption of being able to get medical goods and in some cases medical services in the way that we would traditionally deliver them was completely disrupted. So a perfect example of that is what we're doing right now is what a lot of networks had to suddenly jump to to not lose contact with their patient, which was a massive escalation of telehealth services. So that instead of that reliance on the physical contact, you still had a way to, to get to be with those patients and keep them on track with their care plans. But that also meant bringing people together from IT the physicians, the other caregivers, and getting technology into places where it didn't exist initially. So there was a huge um, investment made by a lot of hospital systems for something that they thought was a nice thing to do in the background as a part of traditional medical care that actually became a lifeline for a lot of patients. The other thing I would say would be the out of expertise skill building. Um, again, forced to do things differently than you ever had before 
Um, sometimes, um, you know, and certainly early on in the pandemic, people not knowing how to actually approach some of these patients who were so sick, um, and also how to actually create spaces that never were considered a place where you would deliver care, like Central Park in a tent or a convention center and other places that traditionally in this country we would have never thought that we would have physicians, nurses, and extenders um, trying to figure out how to do that in an environment that was never really intended to be an inpatient space, whether it was for critical care or just regular, regular floor care for those patients. So those two things, cross-functional projects and out of expertise skill building, I think were really forced upon us. And I think, you know, in many ways, as we've heard the stories through the media and on the nightly news, um, lots of people, you know, in many fields in medicine rose to the occasion um, to be able to actually, you know, deal with something that probably at the end of 2019 and beginning of 2020, no one would have imagined what was going to happen in this country by the end of March, beginning of April. Vipas, when it comes to managing disruptions within care delivery, either pre-COVID or amid the pandemic, what are some strategies health uh, care organizations should consider? Well, disruption is not new to healthcare, right? And healthcare has been in the throes of large scale change transformation for decades, as we all know. I just feel that the demands of healthcare leadership and the urgency of change is much higher now. So our research, the, the, the study that we did, we wrote the paper on, uh, it actually started pre-pandemic. So a lot of the interviews that we did uh, were before the world changed. Mm -hmm. But as we kind of reflected on the data, what was interesting is that we found that a lot of these high performing physician leaders that we talked to, they were already set up to drive change and deal with disruption before the pandemic. And I think in three unique ways. One, uh, we felt in all those interviews that they were really intentional about gaining the experiences that they knew were important. And many were deliberate in taking uh, sideways steps, for example, or even steps back in their career. In a way, they were kind of disrupting themselves. So that was one. They had a really good understanding of the kind of experiences that will accelerate their growth. I think second, which we thought was really interesting, was that they had this inherent curiosity about leadership, almost like a burning desire to want to learn and to apply the kind of leadership skills that one usually doesn't learn during residency, right? So I think that was one very important factor. And the way they went about it, uh, many invested in kind of getting that education through either physician MBAs or just voraciously reading management and leadership literature. So that was interesting. They were kind of investing in their ability uh, to be relevant as physician leader. I think the third was that they all, everybody we spoke to considered leadership and a leadership position to be an important way in which they could contribute to transforming American healthcare. They knew that even though some of them would end up kind of practicing less and be more involved in admin work, that uh, this is the way they could kind of help transform healthcare, whether it was process work or patient centricity and the, and the two experiences that Dr. Parker mentioned, um, or even one thing was interesting was removing administrative barriers for their fellow physicians. Uh, so there's a calling in physician leadership that they really truly understood. I think all of this is really important as this pandemic is kind of reshaping the future of healthcare. And we have six experiences that Dr. Parker alluded to, and we detail that in, uh, in our research paper um, quite clearly. And we call them crucible experiences for a reason, because we, we do feel that they kind of uh, lead to kind of this altered, transformative view of leadership and leadership responsibilities. I think your question was, what can healthcare organizations do? I think these three things. So you need to encourage physicians to be inten intentional in their leadership journey, uh, encourage them to kind of use their curiosity that everybody talked about, and to really help leaders uh, contribute in more radical ways to help transform healthcare. They need to make key experiences a vital part of their physician leadership development program. It's not just putting physician leaders in MBA programs so that they learn the conceptual aspects of leadership, but more the practical aspects of leadership is where key experiences comes in.